Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I have some tip top level ladder action coming away this afternoon chaps. First of all, quick reminder going out to the community guys, if you hadn't noticed that charity event on the What's New tab on FAF is still running. For those of you that don't know what it pertains to, if you haven't been keeping up with the forum threads, long story short, Zep has a friend who, along with his little girl, have had some pretty serious medical issues over the last few months, years, whatever it might be and uh, it's left them financially in dire straits so it's a little old rescue package to come and give them a hand trust me if you only throw a couple of euros on the pile it will still make you feel good so if you haven't donated already guys why not consider doing that on to today's game it is going to be a ladder match i was talking about before and it's all going to go down on theta passage so let's head on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on so I've gone on and on about Theta Passage and how much I hate it because it's been overplayed. Uh, well, it's just one of the most popular ladder maps of all time and as a result had a lot of game time. But it does still make for entertaining games, which is why people still pick it for ladder. Let's take a look at our players. Up here at the top right in the red corner, it's none other than Yamadama. Pretty familiar with this guy by now. He's featured a lot on Guilecast over the last well, six to eight months or so. He's going Aeon, opening first land, and his opponent down here in the blue corner, none other than Olex. Of course, new clan tags installed in the system. He's now just Olex, not with a Vore in front. That is purely for the benefit of Faf Chat. Anyway, he's going Cybrin, opening first land, and you can tell by the opening chat, he's more than a little unhappy about the pairing of Yamadama on Theta Passage, but I've got to say, you, uh, <laughs> you probably picked Theta Passage for your map pool choices, so limited amount of sympathy for you there, but I think it's more geared towards the fact that he's come up against Yamadama, but all is not lost. Olex is a pretty serious player in his own right. Anyway, initial labs out for both teams. We've got a flare heading south from Yamadama and a hunter heading north from Olex. And no micro from Olex, just a straight move up, gets that first lab killed. And the reinforcing, I shouldn't say reinforcing, it's not going to give a lot of assistance, but the intel grabbing mole that was going up on the way as well, a little bit further up, gets blapped by Yamadama. So Olex suffering two losses there inside the first couple of minutes. He's going to go ahead and throw down an air factory second down next to the hydro. And uh, so I was going to say, we've got the similar thing going, but we haven't at all. Yamadama ignoring the air game early on in this one. Going to go mass land. Ping T command doesn't look like it's M. I have no idea what that means as much as I would like to give you some intel. Uh, Yamadama officially speaking in Greek these days. I've heard he's been taking lessons. But uh, the Hunter is still alive. Is it the same one? It is the same one. Two kills for that happy clappy jappy jappy off he goes searching for some poor unsuspecting engineer there is one pushing out to the east down here but Olex well aware that that lab is hanging about trying to bear down on it with the mantis we'll take a look at what Olex can actually see well he is going to make contact with the engineer but whether or not he's able to kill it off before he himself gets blapped off remains to be seen good micro will be a necessity here. A little bit of a wiggle there. Avoids the first few volleys of fire. Oh, and that engineer survives. 19 hit points. Nicely played there from Olex. Good attempt, though, from Yamadama. That was a very close run thing. Jester out for Olex. First air unit onto the map. Looking very aggressive indeed. And, of course, no interceptors anywhere near on the way. Air factory not even started yet for Yamadama. He is ignoring the airplay at the beginning altogether he's gonna have to get some mobile or static anti-air in place quickly or risk losing some serious quantities of build capacity there goes one engineer but thistle out on the field straight away another engineer down and another engineer down halting construction of that fourth land factory jester bugs out still 120 hp on the clock meanwhile the two acus meeting in the aperture in the center no great amounts of damage dealt on either side to that one jester meanwhile hunting for new targets has picked upon this most southerly mass extractor for yamadama nothing in range to help save it though the thistles are currently on their way down mass extractor down the jester's now going to move on to some land units which are sitting out 
a little bit further to the south. This is good early work from Olex. Nice to see second Jester out, this time heading north, still presumably on the lookout for more engineers. Picks off a scout and then moves on to an Aurora. Does manage to find the engineer, which is on its way, expanding to the top. Very even, though, despite these losses in terms of eco. It was 19 mass apiece for a while there. Olex suddenly just jumping to 21, but very little give between these two players. It's extremely close, and Olex has jumped straight into the T2, so Olex is playing quite an alternative build as he's gone straight for early Jester play and early T2. That's T2 achieved within the first five minutes. It is quite a popular build on Theta, but coupled with the early airplay, interesting stuff indeed. Yamadama conversely going all out T1 land for the moment. Doesn't really have a great deal of choice anyway. Lost those Three units of core build capacity. You can see base development only just getting back on track here. And that is a, at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half after that first Jester attack. Maybe even a little bit longer. Thistle's moving back in towards the center of the map. That Jester still looking all right. 339 hit points. And he's potentially spied a vulnerable mass point up here at the top. There's also another engineer slightly to the south, which could be in danger of giving up its life starting to wheel south now but he's on route purely to go for this build jester unaware doesn't quite have the field of view available to spy that engineers this was desperately trying to close down this early air game current mass standing at 20 to 17 in favor of yamadama but that is uh, also with some power issues going on there. Yamadama now down to 16, so still incredibly close, but the uh, assault from the air from Olex, it's like it could be continually frustrating Yamadama. It would be very difficult for him to manage. We have also got tech on the field, of course, for Olex. One rhino down here at the most southeasterly aperture. That's making its way up as we speak. But of course, a lot of resources have gone into those early jesters and that T2 factory, which leaves Olex light on the ground in terms of forces. Yamadama with a little bit more concentration of troops in the center. He's going to get an upgrade on his comm as well. It's always nice to see opponents go for differing builds and strategies, pitting them against one another. Definitely mixes things up rather than just going pure land spam. Jester still alive. 15 kills on this chappy. Now good work from him. Rhino moving in. He's got 1520 hit points left on that one. Engineered down to the right of him as he makes his way further up the map. Meanwhile over in the west Yamadama has picked off a mass point but a bomber coming in over the top taking out at least four units. Olex coming in with the ACU taking out another two and that is absolutely nailed that forward force. Yamadama having to back up with those units back up to some kind of safer climb, some kind of safer territory. Another mech's down up here. Olek's starting to put some distance now, eco-wise, in between him and Yamadama. Another mech's under pressure up here at the top. This early T2 tech working really well for him here at the 8-minute mark. Down it goes. 19 to 7. This has to be power issues as well, surely. No. Down up to 13. Olex down to 12. That definitely was power issues. He needs to get a handle on that so he can really make use of this mass advantage that he has so far. Let's take a look at Reclaim, see if there's much differential between these two guys so far. 1,800 hit points there for Olex. 1,200 for Yamadama. Significantly uh, better off for Olex. Jester dealt with now finally over here in the east lots of thistles moving their way to the edge of the map picking that off as they go and Yamadama I presume managed to finish his upgrade looks like he's got the gun upgrade on the ranged enhanced quantum disruptor indeed it is then he doubles its range it's going to make it a tidy piece of kit there in the center of the map and of course allowing Yamadama to overcharge that tech at range. The Rhinos are going to have to give it a wide berth. And uh, it's one of these maps as well where Static D and uh, especially the Aeon upgrade on the range, on the comm, 
it'd be incredibly useful because it's not a lot of free-range movement. It's quite a uh, confined map, I think is a fair description. So, stra Static D and uh, a dominant ACU in the middle can really dish out the pain to your opponent. Olex now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Yamadama's ACU. We've got a little under 8,000 hit points left on Olex's Com, 8,300 on Yamadama, of course, with that base hit point advantage. Anyway, neither Com having any upgrades affecting the hit points as yet. Olex has moved on to the top float plateau, picked up one of the mexes. Another good bomb from Olex. He's playing an absolute blinder in the air game so far. Ten minutes gone in this one, and most of the casualties I think he has inflicted upon Yamadama have come from the air. It's played into his hands nicely that Yamadama has decided not to get involved in the air game. He has queued up an air factory, but he needs to finish off this land factory first before he's going to move on to that. Once again, comms getting involved with one another. Yamadama down into the yellow now. 7,300 hit points and backing up. Doesn't like the odds there. Has he got enough power in the tank for overcharge? Well, of course he's got the uh, power storage, the energy storage, but his replenishment rate isn't uh, particularly great. Of course, that's a uh, trade-off there. Don't want to uh, overspend unnecessarily on power. Bombers now threatening Yamadama's main base. Look like they are, in fact, going after the power grid. One bomb won't be enough to take out any of those PGENs, but he will get a second look in here. Unless he decides to turn around and head for home. Large arcing turn off the edge of the map there. Here he comes back in. Bombs away. Should be able to pick off a few PGENs there. No, he doesn't. 50 hit points left on that central one. And he's not going to get another pass. I think he was taken out of commission there. But Olex with the Cerberus turret up in the middle. And that hasn't come from the commander. So he's got some T2 engineers waddling about back here. There we go. No tech on that comm. I suppose I could have just looked at uh, his HP. But Yamadama taking an awful lot of Medusa fire down to around 14, 1500 hit points. He's going to have to back up out of there. Look at all of that artillery nestled in behind the reservation there. Causing no end of issues for Yamadama. It was incredibly close. It's a good thing for him. Olex didn't decide to pursue with his ACU. Immediately starts an upgrade. And this is a ballsy move as far as I'm concerned. He's incredibly far forward. And a uh, push from Olex now would force him to abandon that and do it quickly. He wouldn't have any time to waste. There are a few things more irritating than a cancelled upgrade. Yeah, no benefit for that expenditure whatsoever. Bomber circling overhead over the northwestern corner. Only manages to pick off one unit there before finally succumbing to thistle fire. Amadama. Got a rate of fire upgrade? No, we haven't. So that uh, is what I'm talking about there. That was a cancelled upgrade. Resources thrown away. Overcharging into the pack, but Olex's forces nicely spaced out. So no multiple kill for Yama Dharma there. And a little bit of a push from Dharma in the west. This is coming up against stiff resistance in the form of that Rhino. A little bit of micro there, keeping it safe from most of the return fire, but it's going to force Yamadama to back up a little. Yamadama now with 2,700 HP on the common. Olex just eating point defense and com fire. He's down to below 4,000 hit points. Yamadama can't stay in the area and continue to press, though. He is far too low on HP. He needs to use that range advantage, which he's doing. Stay out of the range of Olex's com and those rhinos. That uh, eruptor of Yamadama finally taken out of commission. That will alleviate the pressure 
a little bit. Nice wall section down here at the most southeasternly aperture, preventing any of those T1 units from breaching across there for Yamadama. But it does look like they're thinking of making their way around through the central aperture. And the run by in there could threaten these four mexes in here, and that's mass. Olex definitely doesn't want to lose, especially since he is tied neck and neck. Eco at the moment, 25 apiece between him and his opponent. Losing four mexes would be cataclysmic. I like that word, cataclysmic. I want to use it more often in conversation. Olex deciding perhaps a little dangerously to have his com up front, picking up the mass that he can, but Yamadama deciding to press now. Aurora's bearing down on the comm, take it into the red. 2,300 hit points on the clock. Cerberus turrets back here are firing, but are being thwarted by the relief of the land. That hill getting in the way of that point defense fire and currently protecting Yamadama in the most part. But look at that, 300 hit points, 250 hit points and falling. He manages to bring across that army of rhinos and that is the end of the auroras of olex though incredibly close to death much more so than yamadama was in that previous engagement decent overcharge there takes a couple of rhinos with him and indeed he did get a little bit of a run by in through the central aperture down here that is now being dealt with he has though managed to take out Two of those mechs is Yamadama now officially ahead. 31 to 25 at current reading. So uh, decent work being done here by Yamadama. It looked like he was having a tough run of it at the beginning of this game. 16 minutes now gone though and he is finally ahead and in head by a decent margin. It won't last forever. Engineer in the area of course for Olex working on picking up those mechs as quickly as possible. This, grand, this band of rhinos down here has got to be concerning Yamadama a little bit. So much damage, decent rate of fire on those rhinos, just able to steam through those auroras and fervors. Tin foil, definitely the favorite construction method for Aeon land <laughs> units. Except, of course, the obsidian. That thing is nails and cool, all rolled into one. Adama picking off a few stray rhinos as Olex goes for a bit of a split, trying to maximize the damage from this little group. But that will be the end of that attack. Still heavy casualties inflicted. And my, how things have changed. Look at the map control now. Yamadama on barely a quarter of the map has lost a great deal of ground, mainly due to the lack of tech on the field. I think he does now have a T2HQ and he's working predominantly on Oblivion point defense in the center. Of course, Oblivion's significantly better than the Cerberus turrets. Hey, on you have excellent PD and uh, that certainly plays into uh, Yamadama's hand on a map such as this one lone Medusa just lobbing artillery shells <laughs> over the wall at the bottom hero Medusa well done to you sir two kills definitely deserve some kind of medal or small sash uh, your work down there. I think we can afford to bump this to plus one. We're entering a static phase as these guys start to build up defenses. And we actually had a I had a question in one of the other videos before about why these guys don't build a lot of defenses. Well, it's very map dependent for a start, but generally you want your eco to go into mobile forces. Static limits you where you can actually do damage. Of course, you can get a point defense creep on and sting your opponent, but that is pretty slow and methodical. If you have mobile units, you can use them to both defend and attack. So that is the uh, general theory behind it, but it's why I was saying earlier, the uh, maps such as this, confined maps, 
static D is much more powerful than it would be on, uh, say, a more open 5K or certainly 10K and above. Of course, your own personal space dependent certainly on team games. But yes, there we have the Obsidians. Another question re recently saying what my favorite unit is. Well, it, it is the personal because I have to be true to the UEF, but uh, a close second would have to be the Ilshiva and the Obsidian. They are very, very cool units. Something about the huge alpha damage that the Obsidian do for uh, T2 units. Just walk along blapping things with their enormous shield. Protecting them, but uh, Orlix, uh actually ahead, at least for the moment. He's going to lose another mech up here at the top left, and that should even things up. 31 apiece. There it goes. 4,300 mass banked so far for Olex, but 7,700 for Yamadama. So Yamadama has been pulling in a significantly larger amount on reclaim. Another little push from Yamadama heading south over here in the western edge of the map, but uh, I think he's going to promptly rethink that. Too many rhinos on the ground with the inclusion as well of the Cerberus turrets in the area. And it's going to make life just a little bit too difficult. He did have an even song mobile missile launcher in there, but uh, he's going to need a lot more than one to break that area, I think. Olex returns the favor, takes down another mech, and is going to pick off another one as well. Good roving skills from both of these players, stinging their opponents. But no, you have to finish that one off, Olex. He comes back and finishes it off that particular cyber. And he's had a lot of difficulties in training. Private Pile hasn't done very well at all. So uh, I think we can afford to give him a little bit of slack. Yamadama getting another upgrade on his comm now. Oh, I say another upgrade. I have only had the one, of course. He No, he has got that second one on there already. So uh, we've got the range, the rate of fire, and I would guess the next upgrade would be some kind of personal shield gen. Uh, if he really wants to make use of all of the eco he's plowed into that commander that would be the next logical step and turn this commander into beast mode John Rambo Once again I think we can afford to go back up to plus one so that's what's going on in Yamadama's camp what's going on down here we've got T3 on the way for Olex simultaneously as well working on enlarging enhancing his power grid getting a T2 P gen in there that will Finally bump him above Yamadama's power production as and when that completes. But TAC missiles inbound from Olex. Countermeasures in place, but it sails right past. And is fortunately for Yamadama taken out by another countermeasure a little bit further back. Volcanoes doing their job nicely there. But up here at the top, Olex catches out a group of Yamadama's units. And you saw their EMPs going off, so good unit mix up here from Olex throwing in those Medusas someone says I should have should get t-shirts done with me pointing at you saying build more Medusas yes I think uh, I think that would be a phenomenal idea if I thought more than one person would buy them but uh, never a bad idea build more Medusas because they are so utterly pimp not just because of their damage but crucially that EMP blast Disabling units temporarily, allowing sometimes inferior numbers of cyber units to get the upper hand on their opponents. And this is a real standoff now. 23 and a half minutes gone between these two guys. 37 mass apiece at current reading, so it couldn't be tighter. This is what I mean now, though. Lots of PD on the ground. So ground forces alone going to be tough to break your opponent. But Yamadama does indeed go for the personal shield gen. He's going to eat an awful lot of Cerberus fire, though. He gets too close to that central little fortification there. Two units of T2PD under shield cover. So 
So it needs to be cautious. Alex leaping ahead again in the mass game. 39 to 33. Adama coming through the central aperture. Picking off some of these units. And you really see the pain that an upgraded commander can dish out. Just the sheer range on that bad boy. And the amount of hit points, of course, with that com. 14,300 hit points on the armor, but at full shield, another 29,000 hit points on top of that. So you're basically looking at uh, a monkey lord right there. Outrageous amounts of hit points for a commander. And he's quite happy just to take a little bit of Cerberus fire while he tidies up these units, but we're getting some trebuchet fire incoming from Olex. Now Adama will struggle to counter that. He won't want to walk right the way down here, or certainly I wouldn't. Relief of the land now blocking Yamadama. Lots of the juice is getting picked off at the corner there. About half his shield depleted so far. Definitely needs to be careful now that Olex is switching up to range. There's not going to be a lot of he can do about that, really. Trebuchet zeroing in on that com very nicely indeed, and the brick has actually gone north. I think he needs to be particularly careful. I suppose he's concerned by that oblivion turret. He can certainly deal with units. Two obsidians down. Yamadama once again straying into the firebox of that central fortification from Olex and this time he's going to bring his T1 and T2 land with him. This looks like a base busting exercise. He's got to get through that shield and get through it quickly. He's taking a lot of fire from the extra Cerberus turrets further back. And, of course, there's a brick in here as well. Medusa's working on the units. EMP is, of course, not going to affect the comm. But uh, all the other units are vulnerable. Yamadama's shield is now down. He's relying on the 16,500 hit points on the commander. But the shield is taken out of commission. All of the defenses that were under the shield are now down as well. That is a very, very good example of how to break a fortified position. Nice purposeful play there from Yamadama. Meanwhile that brick still working on it up at the top and of course the moment I mentioned it eats a volley of oblivion and obsidian fire and is consigned to the ethereal scrap heap. Yamadama taking a lot of arty fire now. He's determined to finish off these emplacements Gonna leave any fortifications in play here and this is getting a little bit uncomfortable for me I think you should back up son good overcharge takes down a trebuchet at least but there are three more further back very back and forth game this one Yamadama on 5700 hit points but a lot on the shield in terms of recharge Got three or four Corsairs out for Olex, who's made the transition into T2 Air. Been transitioning really nicely throughout this game, changing things up to keep Yamadama on his toes. And that is just the next step. But how much damage has Yamadama done with that com, who's not looking particularly healthy right now? He's nearly down into the red, 4,500 hit points left on that chap. Olex once again trying to snag the top corner mexes. Unlikely to hold on to them for long though. Obsidian's bearing down on that position. Meanwhile the trebuchets nestle themselves in amongst the central reservation and go straight after the emplacements that are stationed behind Yamadama's comm. Take those out of commission and Yamadama will have well nowhere quite frankly to run to. Yamadama still working off T2 with no plans to go for T3 yet either. So uh, 
He really has to get a lot of work done with his calm. That's where he's thrown his eco in this game in the essence of upgrades. Corsairs coming in as well, but they've got a band of red inties chasing after them. One Corsair down, another badly damaged. And some good spacing from Yamadama as well of these ascendants. As those Corsairs stray onto his side of the map. They take a barrage of flak. Olex looking a lot healthier than he did earlier. Almost back up to full health, but for some reason chasing down Yamadama. That is ill-advised when Yamadama has that range and rate of fire advantage. But Yamadama still taking tremendous amounts of long-range artillery fire. Now four trebuchets stationed back here. A long way out of Yamadama's sphere of influence. But uh, look at the uh, kills down here. Four decommissioned mexes there for Olex, who's actually losing in terms of mass now. 39 to 25 at current reading. Let's slow it down and take a look at Reclaim, see how these guys have been doing. 13,000 banks so far for Yamadama, and 11 going on 12,000 banks so far for Olex. So not a tremendous amount in it, but still enough to be mildly significant on a map of this size. Bricks in retreat, or at least one of them, picking off units as they go. There's no way... Yamadam's going to get any penetration there. And look at this. This is an incredibly uncomfortable situation to be in. Yamadama has to continue to use his comm because if he falls back here, the trebuchets will move forward and start kicking seven shades of poo out of his base, which he doesn't want to happen. If that happens, it really is all over. But i got to say, if he can't break the front lines here and deal with these trebuchets, I don't know what recourse will be open to him if anything more static D popping up around here but it's just more easy targets for those trebuchets the amount of artillery fire coming in absolutely Brutal bombardment. That's a very sorry state of affairs. He's doing well, though. I mean, he's not letting it get him down. He's still pushing out with units, preventing from Olex moving up with any build capacity up here and taking this area. He's still actually ahead on mass, but he needs to hit T3. Surely he needs to hit T3 if he's going to stay in this, and he needs to do it quick. Well, he's still got the ability to make things happen with that commander. Olex not electing to push up any further with his trebuchets at the moment. Probably concerned about Yamadama's comm movement. Wave of Corsairs coming in, going after the T1 P-Gens. What has that done, if anything, to the power grid? Well, he's got a couple of T2 P-Gens under shield cover back here. I don't think uh, Olex is going to be able to cripple him in terms of power anytime soon. Brick, meanwhile, moving back up to that top corner. And once again, it looks like a corner could be about to change hands as it so regularly does on Theta Passage. But the bottom aperture now open. Once again, units streaming through from Yamadama. This is why these players are at the level they're at if you're a newbie and wondering what separates or what are the main things that separates the men from the boys in this game or indeed most RTSs. It's when all looks like it's going bad at the middle. A good player, a pro, will still work out how to hurt you somewhere else. And that is what he's trying to do, continuing to press down here. He's only managed to take out one mechs, the other still surviving on 120 and that obsidian not going to get anywhere near that t2 mex he's trying to go for it that was definitely his target but a brick turns up at the wrong time for him and puts him out of his proverbial misery build capacity going pop in large numbers up here for olex he's not really too happy about that now 
Aldama still picking off Mexes as and when he can. He should turn around and try and get these back up here. Sabra's turrets causing no end of problems, but this is what I was afraid of for Yamadama. Six trebuchets at that front line now. You can see just how far they can reach. And they're only going to have to move to about here, and they're going to be able to reach all of these main core structures in the center of Yamadama's base. And the problem is, is he doesn't really have the firepower to get close enough to kill him off. There's a lot of Cerberus turrets down here. Olex has got his com. And of course there are the odd brick, the odd brick roaming about. He's not going to know the positioning of all of those. He's got intel coverage of this bit, but that is it. Olex doing a nice uh, little scouting sortie there sure he knows where absolutely everything is on the field. Trebuchet's moving up and this is where the pain really begins for Yamadama as that T2 HQ, sorry T3 HQ comes under fire so indeed Yamadama went for that tech but he's already lost about 50% of the HP. He has to bring his commander forward. He cannot allow that bombardment to continue. And unsurprisingly, Olex backs up with his trebuchets. 37 going on, 38 minutes gone in this one so far. Where are the bricks? We've got one stationed out here. Olex has a lot of Cerberus turrets, but look at the hillsides causing problems so far. Dama with a large hit point advantage. Olex actually needs to back up now. He's not just taking fire from the commander. There's also the obsidians to worry about as well. The Cerberus turrets primary the commander. But Yamadama skirting it around the hill. And Olex down to below 2,000 hit points. Needs to continue to back up and overcharge as he goes. It's absolutely essential that he overcharges. Olex, don't do this to me. It's going to be really close, but he doesn't make it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. That's got to hurt. He had him. He had him on the run, but that just shows you at this level, you, you can't take anything for granted. One small mistake, which is really all it was. Look, we've got bricks coming in around the sides here. You do, of course have one harbinger on the field but that was never going to go to toe to toe with that uh brick we've got one over here as well uh that would have been game all he had to do was get his commander safe that would have been game but uh hey ho uh commiserations olex and thank you as well for throwing that one up onto the replay forum always nice to grab these replays off there hope you enjoyed that one guys as always more to come from me in the future in the meantime Stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.